If you've seen any of my Warframe videos, you're likely already very familiar with this frame. Loki. He's been my favorite frame ever since I started playing way back in 2013. And in fact, he was my first ever frame, as back then, he was one of the starting three. Fast forward years later, and I've since adopted him as a persona of sorts. So it's no exaggeration to say that I kind of have a connection to everyone's favorite trickster. Which is why it's such a shame... ...that he's been neglected. Loki was released alongside the original 8 frames all the way back in 2012. Marketed as a deceptive trickster, he has always had a focus on crowd control and enemy manipulation. Decoy allows Loki to redirect enemy aggro towards a hologram, protecting other entities as well as himself in the process. Switch Teleport allows for him to single out and disorient a single target. And Radial Disarm, his most impactful ability, allows for the removal of all ranged options for most most enemies hit by the wave. And for about half of the game's lifespan, he was considered one of the best frames in the game. But nowadays, he's so irrelevant to most content that it's pretty easy to forget that he even exists. So, what happened? Simply put, the game evolved, and he hasn't. In fact, despite being a part of the original 8, he has had, by far, the fewest adjustments out of all of them. Not just that, but he has had the fewest adjustments out of any frame, period, when adjusting for age. Excalibur, Ember, Volt, Rhino, Mag, Ash, and to a lesser extent, Trinity, have all had significant adjustments to their kits over the years to help them stay relevant. But but Loki has gotten almost nothing. And it's not just that he hasn't been given attention, it's also that he was saddled with a kit that was destined to age badly. Loki is a rare example of what I call a hyper-specialized frame. Nowadays, most frames dip their toes into a variety of areas, many having not just damage, but also heals, buffs, and indeed, crowd control. But you do, on rare occasions, get a frame who will focus exclusively on one role and have almost zero potency in other areas. The most common form of these frames are usually those entirely focused on damage, Ash being a good example, with Trinity being an example of a hyper-specialized support frame. But Loki is an extreme case. His entire kit is dedicated around crowd control, and crowd control has been severely beaten, outclassed, and made irrelevant relevant over the years. And whilst many frames have suffered the consequences, few have felt its effects worse than our Norse god here. But before we get any more into Loki, let's first look at why crowd control has been made so irrelevant over the past few years. Let's break all this down. Let's rewind the clock a bit. Back in 2013 to 2014, the game was in a far simpler state. Damage scaling for players wasn't nearly as ridiculous as it was today, the only enemy designed to counter your powers were nullifiers, and the selection of frames was quite small, capping out at just about 22 frames by the end of 2014. Now, I'm gonna be going purely off of memory here, so if any vets think this sounds wrong, uh, feel free to correct me in the comments. It's been over a decade, so give me a break. At this point in time, damage damage wasn't the central focus on everyone's minds. And in fact, the only notable damage frames out by this point were Saren, Nova, Ash, and Mesa. Nova at the time being the clear favorite thanks to Molecular Prime, with Mesa taking that mantle shortly after her release. Now, because Warframe's damage scaling was still in its infancy, no one really considered damage to be a super important statistic. Along with that, there were far fewer mission types and even fewer that demanded kills in order to complete the mission. So, 
flame usage was quite varied at this stage. Sure, nuking mobs was nice, but it only really mattered in a handful of missions. And this era lasted for a good few years afterwards, though the game was slowly changing and putting more damage potential into the hands of its players. Over time, DE had to compensate. Enemies became tankier, more counter mobs were introduced such as army drones found in arbitrations, scrambuluses, overguard, and mobs with just very specific immunity to powers. All of this in an effort to keep players from simply mashing their face on the keyboard to nuke groups of mobs. However, these efforts didn't just stop at the frames who were clearing enemies. They also hindered any abilities, including crowd control, and even worse, to a much harsher degree. Let's take nullifiers as an example. Let's throw a Voban Bastille and an Excalibur Exalted Wave at it. The nullifier bubble will stop both abilities, but notice that Excalibur actually harms the bubble. And it's not just Excalibur, many other damage abilities can harm a nully bubble as well. But if you're rocking a crowd control power? Tough fucking luck. In fact, nullies as a whole are just really inconsistent. Some frames can damage their bubble, whilst others can't. But that inconsistency is another issue altogether. Just know that, yes, I'm aware that I am cherry picking the examples of frames that can hurt the bubble, but oh, oh, oh don't you worry. This doesn't stop at nullies. Other power countering mobs are subjected to this as well. Overguard being an even more egregious example, since crowd control was already weak by the time it was introduced, and ironically, Overguard just further incentivized damage frames because yes, much like nully bubbles, many damage dealing powers can break through Overguard as well. But CC can't do shit to them. To say that there is an imbalance in how counter mobs suppress powers would be a massive understatement. Hell, Limbo literally cannot run a max range bubble build if he's in a mission with Corpus or Corrupted because the moment a nullifier spawns in, it will pop his cataclysm, and there's nothing he can do to prevent it. And look, I know that Limbo is a polarizing frame and maybe you're thinking, well, he shouldn't be running max range in the first place, but my point isn't focused on that can of worms. The point is that this this is a frame who is so fucked over by a single mob that it strangles build potential in the cradle. This could apply to any frame and it would still be fucked up. <sighs> Yeah, I know I'm not exactly the funny he-who man like I usually am in my videos, and this video probably has a vastly different tone to all my other videos, but this is such a big deal to me that I genuinely want to give it the respect that it deserves. Anyway, the ironic thing is, many of these mobs were designed to counter mindless power spam, but in many ways, they actually encourage that playstyle for damaged focus frames. Why play a frame who can actually be stopped by these mobs and have to actually adapt to their threat? when you can just play Baruch and slam your face into the keyboard. So yeah, these counter mobs disproportionately affect any power that isn't a damaged focused one. But that isn't the only reason why CC has been made less appealing. Before I even get into this segment, let me go ahead and intercept a thought that I know that some of you may be having. I can complete any mission with any frame. To which I reply, well done shitshot, of course you can get through any mission with any frame, but I don't think it takes a genius to understand that it's much more fun when the gameplay interacts with a player's toolkit in a positive way. Sure, I could take away all four of your abilities and kick you into a three hour defense, but something tells me that you won't be very engaged. So, with that out of the way, it seems like every new update, there's a new mode that actively discourages CC usage. Now, let me be 100% clear here, I'm not saying that every mode needs to have a CC check. No, what I'm saying is that we have game modes where CC actually makes the team perform worse. A classic example would be Sanctuary onslaught. The only thing that this mode cares about is kills per second. And yeah, I know that most of us play this mode to level and don't exactly care about quote doing well, but just bear with me for a moment. If you do want to perform well, you bring a damage frame or you get the fuck out. 
Crowd control often just slows the entire team down since this power is usually delay enemies in exposing themselves. So if you were to think to yourself, I want to get far in SO, and then try to bring something like Loki, you're going to actively be shooting yourself in the foot. But there's more examples. Defense missions can be brought to a snail's pace if someone keeps stunning everything. Disruption actively goes out of its way to specifically punish CC against bomb carriers. Natural cells become slower to do if CC is active because enemies have to be killed and specifically within a certain area and the list just goes on and on and on but an even bigger problem is that many of the mission types where you are basically ordered to bring damage and nothing else are linked to important reward pipelines going back to natural cells this is an unchanging game mode if you want natural cell rewards you will be doing the natural cell tango and burning down mobs to fill a meter if you want to do that well you bring a DPS, and Netra cells offer big rewards. And again, I'm not saying that CC has to be changed to be more valued than damage. My point is that there has been more and more game modes over the years where it is not just pointless to bring crowd control, it can be outright detrimental. You can bring a DPS focused frame to any mission and you'll perform well with it. But if you bring a frame focused on CC, you are buried into an extremely shallow niche hole. So, what, do we need game modes where killing enemies is bad and CC is the only option to get through it? No, obviously not. But I don't think I'm asking for much when I say we need mission designs to allow for crowd control to work without fucking over the mission directive. A good example of this would be mobile defense. In this mission, the goal is to defend an objective for a specific amount of time. It doesn't matter if you kill enemies or simply halt them, as long as you can run down the clock, that's all that matters. So this is a game mode that allows players to run whatever frame they wish, and they won't be punished for it. Other examples would include Excavation, Interception, and for as rare as it is, Hijack. More recent mission types like Alchemy are good as well. What I want is variety. I don't want to feel like I'm forced to play a tile nuking frame to complete a mission without much stress or time loss. I I'm not even asking for CC to be as viable as damage dealers. I'm just asking for it to be an option without it hindering the mission. But we still aren't done. There's one last nail in the coffin for CC that we haven't discussed yet. Advantages that crowd control powers typically have is that they're often instant, taking effect on enemies immediately, and they're usually equally effective on a mob regardless of whether that mob is level 1 or 100. They're something that can immediately get hold of a situation before it becomes deadly for the team, and they're quick to deploy. And in the past, these traits meshed well when assisting damaged focus frames, as many damage dealers need time to build up their nukes. Good examples would be Garou and Equinox. The idea is that whilst damage focused frames are building up their big old damage explosions, crowd control would be used to keep the situation under, well, control in the meantime. But in recent years, damage focused frames have been able to put out their damage waves faster and faster, to the point where certain frames can just constantly keep a map pelted with damage output. And new frames like Colervo are excellent examples of this, but even older ones like Mesa fit this as well. When frames are able to obliterate a tile in half a second of preparation, yeah, there's not much reason to bother locking down mobs. DPSs nowadays can usually cover themselves, but before you make the assumption that I'm going to suggest that we nerf damage dealers across the board, rest assured that I am not, and there's multiple reasons why, which I'll get into in a minute. So that's why crowd control has found itself to be rather irrelevant. Harsh and extremely common counter mobs that are heavily biased in favor of damage powers, game modes that punish you for using crowd control in the first place, and damage output being so readily accessible that the need to halt enemies in their tracks is kind of redundant. So now, let's go back to Loki. As mentioned before, he is a hyper-specialized frame. Three of his four powers exist purely to hinder mobs with one power dedicated to survivability. To say that this frame is 
is kind of focused on crowd control would be a massive understatement. And in fact, he is the only one in the game that leans this hard into the role, with very few being able to challenge his cardboard crown of King of CC. And that has now become a problem. I will readily admit that frames like Trinity could also use some help nowadays, since a lot of her usefulness has also been made redundant by various things. Things like Arcane's Helminth Operator, yada yada yada. But the thing about Trinity is that it almost never hurts to have one in your group. She doesn't actively make missions slower, she just makes everyone feel more comfortable and directly augments everyone else. It does not matter how many new support tools the game introduces, I will never not be happy to see a Trinity on the team. Unless I was like a sweaty Eidolon speedrunner or something. But Loki is a completely different story, and after all of this discussion, I think it's kind of clear that he is in dire need of help. Which is why, when I read a certain tweet from Pablo, the game's creative director, that I started to get really worried about this frame's future. So an individual had asked him a question in regards to Loki. Quote, Will we be seeing a Loki rework at some point? I know he just got an augment and I can't make a full judgment call until it releases, but it feels like the game evolved without him and he feels a bit lacking now. To which Pablo responds, quote, I think it would be sad to turn Loki into a DPS frame that spreads viral AoE nukes or something. Loki Master Race had its heyday. The game has changed and his role is very niche, but I think the changes needed to make him king again would just make him not Loki. And it was this response that has pushed me to finally make this video. See, I've had this video idea in the back of my head for like a year now, but reading this kind of set off emergency alarms in my head. Because in many ways, I see where Pablo is coming from, but I also think that his vision here is misguided. Something I find telling about this reply is, notice how the individual who asked the question made zero comment on the direction that such a rework would theoretically go in. Pablo just automatically makes the assumption that it would have to be a rework that turns him into a DPS. And I mean, yeah, that kind of shows just how much of a stranglehold that DPS frames have on the game's current direction right now. It's very difficult to introduce a frame who doesn't do decent damage and have them be received well amongst the community. And I feel like that the reason that this has happened is because the game has actively pushed for that playstyle and that playstyle alone. And I think I made my case on that pretty clear when I was talking about why CC as a whole has kind of died. With that said, I do not think that this means that Loki should just be left adrift in the sea of irrelevance. Just because he was good at one point in time does not mean he deserves to be neglected. So, let's finally talk about what can be done here. First, the obvious but in my opinion, worst answer, we could absolutely turn Loki into a DPS. And I don't actually know why Pablo seems to think that we can't. He seems to think that we can't without also losing his trickster visage. We have to remember that video games are smoke and mirrors, equations and numbers hidden behind bloom and visual effects. We blanket internal functions in a cover of aesthetically pleasing design. Who's to say that we couldn't turn Loki into a frame who does damage while still respecting his aesthetic of a trickster? Like, I can already picture a rework off the top of my head where he focuses on dealing damage by having Decoy absorb damage from mobs before exploding and dealing all of that damage in a big crit multiplier or something, and using radial disarm to group mobs towards the decoy. Would he be the best DPS? No, plenty of frames would still wipe mobs faster than he could, could, but the point is that he would be able to exist within the game's current direction. But do I think we should turn him into a DPS? No. And the reason for that is simple. I just don't want to continue the status quo. I want something different. And I think that Pablo is thinking that he has to make Loki king again for a rework to be worth doing. I respectfully disagree. Remember how I mentioned how I would always be happy with a Trinity around? Well, that's not because she's a top tier frame. It's just because her kit doesn't actively push against the rest of the game's core. Trinity isn't the best, but she also isn't actively detrimental. 
And that is all I'm asking for here. Which leads me to option number two. Turn Loki into a support. Now, not a healer like Trinity, mind you. I'm talking something more along the lines of a debuffer slash augmenter of sorts. Someone who focuses on benefiting his team in a more offensive way. So just to spitball some ideas here, a decoy could be changed to release a debuffing wave of energy whenever an enemy attacks it, which come to think of it, is kind of what the new Augman does? Not exactly a wave, but hey, step in the right direction. We could replace Switch Teleport, because man, that power is ass outside of trolling your teammates, with a power that lets Loki switch attributes from enemies to himself and allies. For example, if done in the direction of an overguarded enemy, he would immediately remove the overguard from the mob and grant overguard to himself and his team. If done on a nullifier, he would immediately pop the bubble and give his team small mini nullifier bubbles that absorb certain hits. Maybe he can rip Eximus effects off and give his team, like, personal Eximus ice bubbles or energy pulses from the energy leeches. Radial Disarm could have a completely new additional effect, where Loki grants himself and his allies a damage increase that scales in effectiveness the more enemies that are hit by the wave. And for the love of God, change his passive! Now, again, that was all spitballed, and I haven't really thought too much about it, but the point is, I feel like Loki would be much better off as a support than a damage dealer. But, at the end of the day, both of those solutions are just skirting around the actual problem. Crowd control is near worthless, and fixing this would take a lot of time and risk alienating the community. But let's just say that I could snap my fingers and make changes to the game on demand. What would I do to make CC a more appealing option? First, the counter mobs. I would personally flip the script here. I would make it much harder for damage dealing powers to actually affect these guys. Uh, damage powers would no longer be able to shrink nullifier bubbles. Overguard would no longer be affected by damage dealing powers either. Scrambuli would specifically disable damage dealing powers, etc, etc. Crowd control, on the other hand, would be changed to pierce these counter mobs. Nullifiers would be affected by things like Rhino Stomp, Harrow's Chains, lull, and so on. Overguarded enemies would also suffer from the effects as well, regardless of whether they have OG active or not. RB drone link targets would also be affected as normal, and mobs with unique individual immunity powers like Thrax Centurions would no longer be exceptions either. So... Why would I do this? Because these mobs were always intended to disrupt how players normally play, and I feel like most of them have failed in that objective. The closest that any of them have come would probably be arbitration drones, since as far as I know, those little guys are immune to all powers. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong, though. Anyway, in this new state, these mobs would force players to either gun them down, which is still perfectly valid, mind you, or or, if things get out of hand, crowd control them to make them easier to deal with. This alone is giving CC a much more broad niche amongst the game. This is also why I don't think that we should nerf damage dealers. Not only would that be a shit ton of work going through every single damage focus frame, but it wouldn't feel good for the players. Instead, we need stronger barriers to make other options more appealing. And I know, I know this suggestion will still make people angry, but guys, we are at the point where even the things designed to stop mindless damage pumping are being solved by just dealing damage. We need variety. And because I don't want to nerf damage, this is the best possible alternative, I feel. Second, I would try to, in the future, account for crowd control powers being an option and avoid making modes that perform worse when they're used. I'm sure we've all had situations where the last mob in a defense wave is stuck in someone's CC and we have to take like half a minute to figure out where the fucker is to continue to the next wave. I don't want this to be a thing anymore. Now, I do think that it's a little bit too late to go back and change the older modes just because that would be a ton of work. This is more just looking into the future. Less sanctuary onslaughts, more interceptions. So, let's now recap. Let's look down the paths that we've uncovered and see if we can help Loki and indeed the game as a whole. The way I see it, there's three that we could go through. The easy path, 
the practical path, and the best path. The easy path. What I consider to be a kind of bad end scenario for Loki, we turn him into a damage dealer. He joins the ever-growing armada of frames who either focus on spreading status or spreading crits to fill a room with corpses. Now, despite me calling this a bad end, this still has its merits, and to be frank, I think anything would be better than just leaving him in his current state. But all this would do is continue the stagnating status quo. As I said earlier, I don't want a damage-dealing Loki, but it would be the easiest solution since it wouldn't require the rest of the game around Loki to change. The Practical Path In this path, we instead rework Loki into having a focus in literally anything besides crowd control or DPS. In my opinion, he would work well as a team-focused disruptive support frame. This wouldn't result in a top-tier frame by any stretch, but it would be different. A breath of fresh air and one that I would welcome. Though I know I can't speak for everyone. But for me, turning Loki into something like that, I feel, would work quite well. As a bonus, it would also be far easier than going down our final path. It still wouldn't address the core issue of CC being bad, we'd still just be running away from the problem, but it would result in a decent outcome for Loki. The Best Path this is unlikely, but it would absolutely be the best for both Loki and the game as a whole. However, because of the sheer amount of time and effort it would take to achieve, this is also the least likely outcome. In this path, I propose that we take a hard look at CC as a whole and buff it all across the board. Raw CC powers should pierce counter mobs, and indeed, most enemies besides bosses should no longer be immune to CC. And equally important, the game would need to shift its design of new games game modes to encourage CC, not discourage it. And of course, Loki himself would still need some touching up directly. Loki has been the face of my channel for almost a decade, but more than that, he represents a time where Warframe was a much more balanced game in terms of playstyle variety. He is a frame so radically out of his element, such a relic of the past, that he is the perfect anti-poster boy for Warframe's current direction. And while I find that honestly kind of endearing, the worst thing that we could possibly do at this point is nothing. And I can't say that I expect this video to change much as I'm not an official partner anymore or in contact with anyone over at DE. But I hope that maybe this video can serve as fuel for discussion so that the community as a whole can get something done about our favorite dork ass stealth frame. And now I'm off to create my magnum opus, the deceptive bond build. Now I can be hurt in two ways instead of one.